My name is David. This is week 38 of 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. If this is your first time here, this is a one-year spiritual series as we attend a new church each week. So if you want to join along, hit the like button and subscribe. Always appreciate the support. So for anyone that leaves uh, church requests in the comments below, I always really appreciate those. And I had one request to attend a Messianic Jewish congregation. And at first, I kind of dismissed it. Uh, when I wrote the first 52 churches in 52 weeks, uh, it's on Amazon. Links are in the description box below. Uh, it was more like 49 churches, a synagogue, a Baha'i temple, and a Quaker meeting house in 52 weeks. And uh, that just that just wasn't as catchy. But then I got a second request for a Messianic Jewish congregation, and I, I was just very confused. What is, what, what's the difference between a, a Jew and a Messianic Jew? So when I researched it, I found out Messianic Jews are Jewish Christians. They believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And when I first read that, it just kind of tri tripped up my brain a little bit in terms of how does that work? So this past week, I was doing a little bit of research into the Messianic Jewish congregations. And everything that I found, like the Google reviews weren't very good. Usually like 3.7, 3.9, around that kind of vicinity. So I started looking at some of these Google reviews and noticed it was from a lot of Jews who were, comment, were leaving one-star reviews basically saying that Messianic Jewish congregations, this was Christianity, Christian churches in Jewish clothing. And a lot of the comments that I saw were just very, very disparaging towards this movement. That kind of got me thinking a little bit more, like what is going on here? Uh, this is a whole world that I don't understand. And as I, I did a little bit more research, I found that uh, one commenter actually stated that he appreciated one Messianic Jewish congregation for being authentic about it, for being forthcoming that they were Christian. And when I looked at this congregation, I noticed that the senior teacher, he doubled. He was, a, he was the rabbi on Saturday and then the pastor on Sunday in the same building. So with this Messianic Jewish congregation, it technically is at a church. So for me, hey, this fits for the whole 52 churches in 52 weeks. So I made the visit yesterday and this was very, very unique. Uh, so I'll share a little bit of a sample of what worship was like inside and I'll be back in a moment with some takeaways. That year of Jubilee song, that was stuck in my head for a few days. Uh, the overall excitement, the clapping, uh, a lot of movement with that Jewish worship music. I kind of liked it. And I think maybe it's just the novelty of me being a newcomer, who knows. Uh, but for this portion of the video, uh, I have been wrestling, uh, trying to orchestrate my thoughts on what to make of this Messianic Jewish congregation visit especially because this is not catered towards a guy like me, a lifetime Protestant, just kind of poking my head around to kind of see what it's all about. I've talked about my appreciation for niche churches, for entry points with other type of churches, 
For instance, with cowboy churches, it caters towards those with that Western heritage. With trucker churches, they kind of have their own walkie-talkie language. And even with biker churches, uh, like they want to make sure no one gets left behind on the ride to Calvary. With this, it's catering towards the Jewish customs and traditions and worship. Because it's kind of has one foot in the Christian church camp and the other foot in the Jewish synagogue camp, and to see the reaction with those one-star Google reviews, uh, this is a, a very touchy type of religious movement that I saw from this. So, we, and one of the trip-ups I have, especially coming from a lifetime Protestant, is what Paul often talks about in the New Testament, about telling con converted Gentiles, it's like you can give up those Jewish ways, the traditions, circumcision, the Jewish dietary restrictions, you can give that all up because Christ died at the cross. But then with the Christian church, you know, we, we, we add in all these new traditions and rituals and holidays. If I was Jewish looking at the Christian church, I'd just be scratching my head. It's like you just added all your own customs and traditions. So what's up with that? For this visit with the Christianity, one side that I have grown up my entire life understanding, uh, been a part of, to see that mix and blend into Judaism with its own customs, its own traditions, its own worship, everything that I don't know anything about. Uh, I've only been to one Jewish Purim festival. I've never sat down in a synagogue before for an actual service from that standpoint. To see this merge, I know one side of it. I know absolutely nothing about the other side. So I walked out of this visit... Um, quite confused. And I it's almost kind of like two ingredients that don't quite mix well together because Judaism and Christianity have been kind of butting heads for the last, I don't know, 20 centuries now. It's kind of like, and this is going to be a terrible analogy, it's kind of like pizza and pineapple together. <laughs> and if you have a better analogy, let me know. But like with some people, like pineapple and pizza, people are just like, ugh, that would just, just be gross. But then you have those other type of people that are like, oh, you don't know what you're missing out on. You need to try it. So after this visit, I'm still chewing on it. I don't really know what to make of it. And with one visit, that does no justice. This is not going to be a recap or a review that uh, I can hang my own hat on. Uh, this is going to be something where it, it's nothing negative. I just don't quite know what to make of it all yet. And I think one thing that the rabbi said in his sermon, the one word that, that really stuck out was challenges. And for me, I faced a lot of challenges just trying to understand this, but seeing what this Messianic Jewish movement is doing, I can see they have a lot of challenges themselves. So for my visit, per Jewish tradition, the Sabbath is on Saturday, the seventh day of the week. And I had read somewhere before leaving that with uh, synagogues and with the Sabbath, it's a day of rest. You don't technically need to rush to the synagogue. So I almost kind of put that instruction to the test, and I uh, found myself running about five minutes late. So I, I, I try not to rush. So as soon as I got to this fellowship center, I was shocked. The parking lot, it wasn't big but it was filled to capacity. There was no vacant parking spots. So I had to circle around the neighborhood to try and find someplace else to park. So by the time I finally walked in, it had to be about 10, maybe 15 minutes late uh, before when worship service started. So a woman greeted me at the door. Uh, I think she said Shabbat Shalom. And I said, good morning, because I'm not entirely sure what uh, that all means. And, and I, I'll mention, with this video, I don't understand Hebrew. I don't understand a lot of the Jewish uh, language. I'm probably going to mispronounce a lot of things myself, and I just don't have a, a big understanding uh, as a newcomer. So uh, she gave me, I think, what's called a siddhar. It was kind of this uh, binder with all information. So as soon as I walked in, I, I was trying to find a seat towards the back, and that's when everyone turned to face the wall. Everyone turned to their right. And all of a sudden, I find myself seeing everyone turned towards me. Talk about social awkwardness. So I felt really, really weird when, I, when everyone started to turn towards me. 
So I'm like, I'm not going to sit here. So I, I kind of circled around and found uh, a seat at the opposite end and just tried to observe to see what was happening. So I, from what I saw on the PowerPoint slides, everyone was supposed to face the east, which I understand is like you're facing towards the wall where the Ark of the Torah is. I've also read something that it's facing towards Jerusalem. So that was very strange to me. Uh, but I, I looked around the congregation, and I tell you, the diversity and the age ranges in here was something that I found really, really impressed by. So I would say about maybe 50 to 60 percent of the congregation were, were Jewish. Uh, a lot of people, or a lot of the men and the boys, were wearing yarmulkes, those uh, skull caps, and uh, some of the older gentlemen were wearing shawls. So a lot of kids were in there too, and uh, they were all uh, dressed up for the most part. Here's what I never would have imagined was the diversity. I, I think at least 30% of this congregation were African American. I didn't see anyone, any African Americans wearing any yarmulkes though. So I, I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how this congregation, this Messianic Jewish movement is kind of bringing more people in to its fellowship. Uh, and then I, I think I saw probably about 10% that were Hispanic as well. So I just was really impressed. That was not something I would have thought uh, walking in. And with this congregation, gosh, I want to say there had to be at least 100 people in there. This was much healthier than I thought. Because when I walked in, I thought this was going to be, you know, maybe 20, 30 people. And it wasn't like that at all. So after everyone um, was finished facing the wall, and they turned towards the stage, the rabbi got up and he gave some instructions on everyone to read, I, I wanna say it was called the Amidah. And he, he asked everyone to read from the Siddhar folder. And then when you were, you'd be done, you could sit down. So I, because I got there so late, which was my own fault, I was confused where this was in the folder. So everyone was, was reading this silently. I didn't, and what I didn't know is how long this was going to go for. So later, when I started paging through, and after I found out where I should have been in the Siddhar, they it was eighteen different prayers to read. And with me being lost, like I had taken, a, I was one of the first people to take a seat. Uh, but after everyone was done, then everyone got up, and then the music started, and everyone just started clapping their hands. Uh, really excited, and that's when a, a young man, probably in his 20s or 30s, uh, pulled out or went towards this cabinet, which I understand was the Ark. And then they pulled out this big blue cloaked item. And at the time, I was just like, that has to be the Torah. I don't know much about Jewish traditions, but that has to be the Torah. So they took it out, and this thing was gigantic. And so what he would do then is with the music blasting, he would parade it around the congregation. So everyone in the congregation, every single person, the hundred or so people there, would touch the Torah in the blue cloak. And a woman was following behind and she would shake everyone's hand afterwards. So this lasted a very long time. It had to be at least 10 minutes. So then they brought the Torah up towards the front and they had to take it out with some some handles, some shafts, I'm not really sure. And then they kind of scrolled it over um, this uh, platform area. Eventually when that wrapped up, then they started doing worship music. And I should mention, everyone is standing up during this. So they would play a mix and the worship team, wide age range. There had to be people in like 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, just very diverse. And they would play some Jewish music, but then the, the next song would then be Christian contemporary music. And they kind of flip back and forth. So that was just very unique. And it would they'd change up some of the languages too, throwing in Hebrew and English. By this time, I, I was looking at my clock on this. It was about an hour into the service. And other than just a brief sit down after the Amada, like everyone had been standing the entire time. So the rabbi got up to give his sermon, and this is when finally um, the children would break towards their uh, Saturday classes, and then the rabbi would give his sermon. So the sermon, he mentioned very early on, like the one word was challenges. 
because they have, they're saddled up to the Christian church and they're saddled up to the synagogue. And he mentioned because their services are on Saturday, they get a lot of people coming in who are pastors, who are priests, who are nuns that want to, they're curious about the Hebrew roots in the Messianic Jewish movement. So they'll kind of take a look into this and we'll have conversations with this rabbi slash pastor. And he was mentioning that uh, when he starts talking about God's plan, that's still for Israel from Romans 9, 10, and 11, that gets a lot of people interested. So with his sermon, it heavily focused on children. And he was mentioning a lot of the story was in Matthew and talking about how Yeshua, uh, the Hebrew term for Jesus, which I guess translates to Joshua, I didn't know that, and that's just what I read somewhere. So I'm not, I'm not 100% clear on that. I need to do more research, obviously. Uh, but uh, he he mentioned very heavily about the story about uh, Yeshua uh, kind of leaving towards the temple, and his parents couldn't find him for three days. And he was really bringing this back to their own kids, and how it doesn't matter how young they are, like you can kind of bring them up. But if they have that passion and they have that excitement to preach, even if they're eight years old, let them. After everything had wrapped up, it was about an hour and a half service. And typically after service, I'd like to kind of talk to a few people. Like I'm an introvert. I, I hate to come out of my shell, but by doing this, uh, it, it's helped me get a little bit more used to just uh, interfaith type of dialogue. And for the life of me, I could not get I could not get into a conversation with anyone. And part of that is my own fault. I showed up really late. Uh, maybe another part of it is I wasn't wearing the, the yarmulke. I wasn't wearing a skull cap. Clothing alone, you knew I was an outsider. I was visiting. Everyone was just very close. It was a very close knit community here. So they had friends and they were talking with each other. So uh, no problem, nothing negative about that. So when I, I was hoping, the, the rabbi, I think, was trying to make his way towards me at one point. But every time that he was kind of going down my aisle, uh, someone else would greet him and he'd get in another conversation. So it just, sometimes it just doesn't work. Uh, but I had so many questions. And this is probably one visit that I had where I walked out with more questions, more curiosity than when I walked in with. And I took a few pictures and it was so strange because every time I always get pictures, but I had so many kids like running in front of me anytime I would try and take a picture and it just wasn't working. So I finally just, just left. But um, I, I feel, and maybe this is just um, gut instinct, intuition. I have nothing to base this off of, but I couldn't help but get just a, a sense with the Messianic Jewish movement, like there has to be a little bit of defensiveness, especially with this church, especially after seeing all these one-star reviews um, from uh, people that are not fans of the Messianic Jewish movement. So I don't know if that may have been a reason why I just could not for the life of me get into any conversations with anybody. Uh, but, you know, with Christianity, with Judaism, with that mixing, like those are, it's two religions that have been kind of butting heads for over 20 centuries. So with this movement being relatively new, um, it's, I think it's going to take a long time. And just with everything that has gone on in Israel, um, it's, they got their work cut out for them. And the word challenges, uh, I've never seen a, a church movement or a religious movement in the United States that has probably faced as much religious persecution as this movement as I've seen in any other church or congregation that I've been a part of. We're going to put the kibosh on this week's video. Hope you enjoyed uh, this visit into the Messianic Jewish movement. For next week, I already made the visit out to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Strangite. Uh, this is a very unique and uh, a remnant church of less than maybe a hundred people that are a part of it. Uh, so very interesting. Uh, you'll want to stay tuned for that visit. If you want to stay up to date, uh, always make sure to like and subscribe for future visits. But until next time, hope you have a good one.